did a 1936 Ford help Brett Jones write a number one hit for Tracy Lawrence? Well, he's here today and he's about to tell you. We're the songwriters. I'm here in Franklin, Tennessee today, just outside Nashville, with my buddy Brett Jones at his place. And Brett has had hundreds of his songs recorded. Hundreds. And uh, one of my favorite ones that you wrote was one by uh, Tracy Lawrence. Thanks, man. Better Man, Better Off. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how my first car contributed to my one of my biggest, some of my biggest hits. So when I was in high school, I, I bought, uh, when I was 17, I bought my first car. It was a 1936 Ford. I bought from an old black man for $150. It had been sitting out in the field for 20 years. It had a rusted out floorboard that needed a lot of work. So um, I took two jobs to, to fix it up, you know, to pay for fixing it up. And I worked on it in the barn while I was working these two jobs. And the two jobs were uh, cutting pulpwood and fence posts and uh, working the night shift on the weekends at a plywood factory. And I made $3.30 an hour. And uh, I sold my fence post for $0.85 cents a piece. So it took a long time. <laughs> That's a lot. <clears throat> yeah, it took a long time to make enough money uh, to pay for the parts I needed to fix this car up. And also, the most expensive part was getting the interior done in, in Columbus, Georgia, which is about 40 miles from my hometown. And I taken the car down there, and I almost had it saved up, you know, and finally I had the $700, and, and they got finished with the interior. I drove down to pick it up, and I was so proud. It was the end of the summer, and I handed my $700 cash, and I started driving back home in my pretty much brand new looking 1936 Ford. And everything was going great until we got about 10 miles from my hometown and the distributor cap fell. <clears throat> and when the distributor cap goes out, you're dead in the water. So it just went Brrr. And uh, my buddy who had taken me down there in a 1971 Ford Pinto, uh, which they call Pinto bombs because they have a tendency <laughs> to blow up, right. had a 40 foot <laughs> logging cable in the back of his, his trunk. And so uh, you, you know where this is going. We decided to <laughs> tow it home. <laughs> No. <laughs> so we hooked this logging cable up to this 36 Ford and we're going down the road and we still got a good ways to go, you know, and he's going about, started out at 25 and it's up to 30 and th before I know it, it's 35, 40, 45, 50. And now all of a sudden he's going 55 miles an hour and a 36 Ford is not even meant to go 55 miles an hour. And uh, he just was listening to the radio spaced out, I guess. And uh, so I held my hand out the window and I did like that for him to slow down. And when I did that, he hit the brake, and when he hit the brake, the cable wrapped around the front wheel. <laughs> oh. Flipped it seven times. Flipped last, it? Yeah. And the last thing I remember <laughs> was holding myself oh, no. on the door jam and the, and the pavement rushing by the window. That's before I woke up in the hospital. Oh, man. And I woke up in the hospital and uh, survived, and they brought me pictures to see what the car looked like, and I wished I hadn't survived, because it was just a wreck. You know? <laughs> and I was just heartbroken, you know, I was just... After all those fence posts. After all those fence All that pulp wood. Oh, uh, it was so Damn. terrible. That I never touched that, that car again, other than to put it in my dad's barn, and it sat there gathering dust for 20 years. Fast forward to 1995, and I went down there with a friend of mine uh, to do some chores for my mom and um, he saw that old Ford sitting in the barn. He says, Brett, you know that uh, Telecaster I got you like so much? He said, I'll swipe you even for this old car. And I said, done deal. <laughs> that guitar is this guitar. Oh man. It's a 1970 Fender Telecaster. Wow. Good trade, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but, but and it's, it's a collector's item, you know, it's worth probably fifteen thousand dollars but the wow but the great thing about it is I wrote three of my number one records on this guitar so that car twenty years later gave back a lot more than it took for me from me back in nineteen seventy four. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Isn't that funny how I've had a lot of uh, stories with cars that affected my career. <laughs> Indirectly yeah, you have <laughs> all right Just 
just ain't meant to be Gonna be some pain, I gotta pay the cost And in the long run Be a better man, better off Heartache. I know when the hurting stops, I'll be a better man, better off. I know Rome wasn't built in a day, but there's a lot of good memories in my way. change a thing except for the end Gonna be some pain, I gotta pay the cost And in the long run I'll be a better man, better off Better man, better off. Yeah, I'm gonna learn from my mistakes. Once I'm past this heartache, I know. Be a better man, better off. A whole lot better off. Yeah, a better man, better off. <laughs> that wrote on this guitar. You can find Brett Jones touring all over the country, out on the road, doing songwriter shows, and you can find him online also. He has a brand new CD out called Cowboy Sailor that you need to check out. If you like what you're seeing here on the songwriters, be sure to leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to find out more about learning how to write great hit songs like this, then be sure to visit TomShepard.com, and we'll see you next time.